this is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketGage.com, and this is May 27th edition of Market Outlook. All right, so um, very, very quiet week overall. Lots of compression building up. Let's take a look at uh, the bigger picture. Step back, uh, take a look at the key U.S. indices. And the first thing to note, of course, is that all of the indices are in bullish phases uh, regarding the weekly charts. So as you can see, right, we got our 200 weekly here on the S&P, the 50 up here, our 10 week up here. Everything is stacked. The one thing of concern, of course, is the negative slope on the 10 week moving averages. But net net, you got the same overall condition with a couple of exceptions. IWM, clearly the 10 week is moving up and the, uh, that is the slope, uh, sort of uh, flattening or slightly rising on IWM. So those are your two leading indices, certainly in terms of uh, slope and momentum. Of course, uh, as I've been focused uh, for the last several weeks or at least a month at, uh, or more, IWM really coming on strong here, closing uh, on all new highs on a weekly basis, uh, and that goes back forever. So net-net, long-term trends still intact. Let's take a look at what the daily charts are showing us here. So taking a look at the dailies, a couple of things are happening here. Number one, uh, as you can see, we're also in bullish phases, right? Pretty much across the board. You got this basic uh, compression uh, and it's very, very pronounced in the Dow, in the S&P, and in the Qs. So if we actually get the power to break out from either one of these zones here, that's going to be important. So in essence, let's just bracket this once again. All right, so in terms of the bracketing of the compression zone, this is pretty straightforward here. You have a higher uh, point of compression uh, on the NASDAQ 100. And of course, right now, the Dow is sort of uh, lagging at the moment. Now, the other thing to note is that we have a uh, slingshot pattern uh, in two out of the four indices. And that is a classic inside day pattern. We covered that uh, quite extensively uh, in Thursday's webinar on how to play inside day patterns and m many other patterns as well. So, you know, check out the uh, Slingshots webinar. Uh, we cover uh, specific trading patterns. And again, a breakout through this zone here, along with the short term pattern, uh, both in IWM and in the S&P uh, could provide some fireworks, and I'd be inclined to follow this whichever way it breaks out, either follow it on the long side to the upside or down here on the downside. So there's your setup overall in the S&P. Now, there's a couple of things that are concerning uh, looking at intermarket relationships. And if you take a look at the SPY versus utilities, the S&P versus utilities, you can see we actually deteriorated quite a bit. Now, not enough to cause a flip in the signal, but if you take a look at some other key ratios, um, it's important to note because we've definitely lost ground um, in looking at um, the relative uh, performance of high yield debt. And remember, high yield debt um, is a pretty important harbinger of risk on and risk off uh, conditions in the market. And as you can see, with the big rally in bonds um, and lower uh, U.S. rates, um, things definitely improved um, for uh, in terms of pricing for uh, U.S. treasuries. But it, it gained a lot of ground against the more speculative high yield debt. And as you can see, we punched through the monthly uh, relationship. So at the moment, um, 
TLTs outperforming on a monthly basis, high yield, and starting to attack longer term. That is definitely a deterioration in the risk on environment. So this movement here favors risk off. We got a similar scenario where the S&P lost ground against the uh, bonds as well. And we're on the cusp uh, in looking at wood versus gold. So net net, we lost uh, definite some uh, definite strength here in the risk uh, on environment. So we're going to keep uh, a, an important eye on what's happening uh, in these key intermarket relationships. Now, looking at volume, as we have noted in the past, the volume was definitely the strongest in IWM. It's moved out to new highs. And one thing you can see, there's quite a discrepancy between the different indices. So the uh, concentration of money in specific areas of the market are very obvious here. Take a look at IWM. You've got three accumulation days over the last two weeks, only one distribution. That confirms the breakout in price. Now, on the other hand, take a look at what's happening in NASDAQ and the S&P. Only one accumulation day. So even though NASDAQ um, basically has uh, proven to be a really good performer, and actually uh, year to date, it's the strongest, right? You can see up 9% with the Russells up six and the Dow flat and the S&P just barely hanging on to positive gains. So net net, the volume situation is very uh, fractured here. There's no uh, uniformity between all of the key indices. So again, the big uh, focus is on IWM still holding up and things definitely looking a bit weaker uh, in the other indices. So I give volume uh, a mixed read here. Now, in terms of sector summary, things are pretty much uh, where we left it last week. Now, what's interesting about uh, the current environment is what's picked up enormously um, is semiconductors here. So, right, you can see the semiconductors had been under lots of pressure for the week, it's really been a monster, up 3.6%. So semis, definitely a more speculative uh, uh, sector in the market. The fact that it led the market in a relatively sideways environment, that's seen as a positive. However, right, taking a look at this here, you can see utilities, right, with the uh, drop in rates over the last several days, definitely got a boost, right? It makes those uh, yields and utilities look uh, a lot better uh, when rates drop in bonds. But nonetheless, it's definitely uh, looking in terms of risk on, risk off. Utilities recovering uh, this much um, is definitely suspect. But net net overall, you can see not really much change in the uh, number of sectors that um, have positive, um, positive performance over the last six months. And as you can see, year to date over here, much, much more of a mixed bag. Um, one thing that certainly uh, jumps out is consumer staples, a risk off type of play is uh, having issues uh, year to date down 12%. So uh, when I look at this, uh, overall, I see it as more of a positive, but you're definitely getting a mixed read with utilities gaining as much. And that, uh, as I mentioned before, high yield debt, definitely losing ground here. Um, and we don't like to see that. We want to see high yield debt maintain a nice lead in performance uh, over bonds. Okay, the other big feature is that energy got banged up this week, correcting a huge move to the upside. So, I mean, one thing you can see, right, XLE, the energy ETF, USO, uh, US oil, that's specifically West Texas uh, Intermediate, and oil services company all got banged up. 
right? Somewhere between four and 7% on the downside. Now, what that does, it puts the um, leading sector in correction mode. So uh, market, uh, you know, in this particular, the energy sector really got smacked. Um, and so that's interesting to note. So net, net, uh, you got a pretty mixed bag overall with the compression range uh, in the uh, key indices and the uh, inside day pattern following the breakout over the last couple weeks, either way, uh, makes sense. At the moment, um, I'm sort of still net net bullish on the overall pattern, but things are looking a bit more suspect with the uh, fact that the um, market is showing some weakness in the intermarket relationships, right? Utilities getting stronger, high yield debt losing ground. These are definite reasons for concern, but that's it. Concern at the moment, things have not played out much worse uh, at the moment. So net, net, um, there's your game plan for the week. And obviously, uh, if you're playing any individual stocks, I'd make sure that you're following the hot sectors. And then, of course, playing in alignment with the much bigger picture, which is the broad market. That's it for now. See you next week. And good luck with your trading. And also, have a great extended weekend.